2023 has been a year full of retro remasters, and we've compiled a list of our favorites. Technically, a few of them might have released late in 2022, but we will count it because Game Reward never counts anything that releases in December, so we're going to do it for them. All these games can be found on the Nintendo Switch and other platforms, depending on the title. If you're a retro game fan and own a Nintendo Switch, you've been eating good this year. Hi, I'm Craig with Out of Control Games, and this is our top 10 retro remasters for the 2023 year on the Nintendo Switch. If you're looking for an opportunity to play the original Gargoyles for Sega Genesis, at $15 for a digital copy, this remaster is quite a steal considering the original Genesis cartridge goes for $180 complete in box, and the remaster includes the Genesis original as well, which would be the only reason we'd recommend buying this. The remaster has been reviewed as okay, which is unfortunate because more liberties were taken with the DuckTales remaster, which that was excellent. Gargoyles is short with just five levels, and the rewind feature makes it feel even shorter. Its detection is pretty unreliable, and the new graphics look great, just like the animation of the cartoon, but Goliath doesn't match the charm of the animation from the show. There's definitely a missed opportunity here, but if you're looking to replay the original, this is a great way to financially do it. Just keep in mind of the lacking content and limited gameplay. The music in this game is a joy to listen to and matches the feel of the original show. It's not the worst game we played this year, but we're glad it's here for those who missed out on the original and wish to support official releases of these Disney classics. This is technically not the only game that released in late 2022 on our list. Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion was a blast to play through again. Technically, I played this one on PS4, but it did get a Switch port, which I personally wish I would have played it on, since the Switch allows you to relive the PSP glory days again, if only for a moment. As someone who originally owned this on the PSP, this game was great to sit back and just turn your brain off, play missions, and grind. This port not only updated the visuals to match Final Fantasy VII Remake and the camera, and combat is now controllable. New soundtracks have been added and the gameplay has been slightly altered, but if it's been a while since you played the original, you might not notice a difference. Combat's a little bit more forgiving than the original game was, and so it's welcoming for newcomers. Oh, and you can sprint now, a very welcome addition. Cutscenes are now skippable, which is great if you're just wanting to burn through the game quickly. Menus have been upgraded, allowing for us to actually be able to see what's going on and the menus have gotten a redesign as well. Summons also have been given a facelift, which now match their Final Fantasy VII Remake counterpart. Overall, we welcome these changes and are glad this classic has been brought back to modern consoles. We Love Katamari Reroll is a remaster of the PS2 original classic, and we do love us some Katamari. If you're looking for a great game to just shut your brain off and create chaos, this is it. While the controls are a little awkward at first due to the dual analog controls, it begins to make sense after a few minutes. There are numerous levels in which you'll attempt to grow your Katamari and eventually start rolling up humans, houses, and the game gets absolutely chaotic. But it's an absolute blast to play. Oh, and this game's full of funny and charming moments. The Royal Reverie levels are filler and backstory for the King Cosmos, but they're just as fun as the main game and play just the same. If you're into the Katamari series and missed the original PS2 release, then check out We Love Katamari. Especially if you want something to play in that downtime that doesn't require a lot of thinking. Well, technically this is two games, both Front Mission 1st and 2nd received graphical overhauls, and we technically never received Front Mission 2nd in North America without emulation until now. Also, the first game came out late last year, and we received the second game in October of this year. Front Mission 1st was originally remade for the DS and the PlayStation 1. If you're looking for a strategy RPG series with mechs, then this series is for you. I played the original Front Mission with an English patch in an emulator back in junior high, back when Mobile Suit Gundam Wing was on Toonami and fell in love with it then. This remaster carries over the same great combat and strategy now in 3D versus pixel graphics. Front Mission First is a remaster of the PlayStation and DS title. Battles take place on a grid field much like Final Fantasy Tactics, Tacted Over, and the Disgaea series. One of the unique features of this game is that you damage enemy mechs or Ranzer parts, and that damage can be absolutely random. If you take out the legs, they can't move, take out the arms, they can't attack, and if you destroy the body, then you destroy the whole mech. You can also build and customize your own mechs, and some fights you can have up to 11 of your own mechs on the battlefield. 
Outside of customization, there are pilot abilities as well. First game also features multiple campaigns, so there's plenty of hours you can sink into it. The second game is a continuation of the first game story, just 12 years later, and carries over much of the same gameplay elements. Alongside of new features and tweaks to combat, both games are linear in their stories, much like found in Classic Fire Emblem. Just keep in mind, there's limited experience to gain for your characters, but the games are great in their own right, and we're thankful they've made a return. Do keep in mind the second game in its current state has had several translation errors according to some users, and some complain about the UI and menus in comparison to the first game. Just keep in mind, these are old school strategy RPGs, so newcomers into the series may or may not enjoy the challenge or style of game. When the Advance Wars remakes were announced, many of us were ecstatic. This series has been dormant since the DS, and it gave many fans hope that a new game could be coming if these remakes did well. As a fan of the original game, it did not disappoint. You have different commanders with special combat abilities, and for every city you capture, more funds are awarded to purchase more advanced units to push your capture of the enemy bases. While it seems simple on paper, there's a lot of strategy with land, sea, and air units. Also, various units have their own strengths and weaknesses as well. Only foot soldiers can capture the bases and cities, while tanks are great for destroying artillery and foot soldiers, but they're weak to artillery further away. There's a lot of strategy here, and you want to take your time utilizing all of your units as well as terrain. Gameplay additions featured are fast forwarding the enemy's turn and being able to reset a turn. Both of these are very welcome features. The second game's campaigns unlocked after completing the first, and there's subtle changes in the second game, such as a new tank, super CO abilities, as well as more COs to play as. Both of these games are great to play through, and if you're looking for a great time in a strategy RPG without the RPG elements, then Advance Wars may be the series for you. Assault Suits Falcon Declassified was originally released in the US as Cybernator. This game is an underrated classic. The version we received was severely edited compared to its original Japanese release. Cybernator was a fantastic game full of amazing gameplay and details, from explosions to details in the background and foreground. We can't stress enough how much of the original game was lost due to translation. Cutscenes and characters have been reintroduced with a proper English translation. The release is more than just a straight port. Rearranged music, strategy guides, galleries, and more have been added for your enjoyment. This running gun style mech game is a fantastic time. While your mech might move slowly at first, you have a boost mechanic that used in conjunction with jumping makes traveling in this game a blast. You'll definitely enjoy this action side scroller. If you were a Mobile Suit Gundam fan in the 80s or 90s or enjoy 80s 90s mecha, and this game is absolutely for you. That action, run and gun, shooter style gameplay with some side-scrolling shooter elements from time to time is a must play. Ghost Trick Phantom Detective is a cult classic released on the DS in 2010. This game is a point and click detective adventure and it takes about 10 to 12 hours of gameplay. And this game is gorgeous. And it's highly unfortunate the game did not do so well in its original release, because who knows what kind of sequels we could have gotten. The story's full of plot twists left and right. It has a full cast of unique characters, and many puzzles may require some trial and error, but you won't mind due to how beautiful the game is and how clever the puzzles are. While each level has a 4 minute timer, it's not something you should stress over. We could continue to gush over how funny and clever this game is, but honestly, it deserves to be played for that experience. At $30, it's gone on sale from time to time since its release, but even at full price, this game's absolutely worth it. This is one of those rare games where, honestly, the less you know about it up front going in, the better your experience will be. While Pikmin 1 and 2 HD are technically the third and fourth strategy games on this list, Pikmin has been more of an adventure series. Or is Pikmin a survival game? Either way, if you missed the original Pikmin 1 and 2 on the GameCube and the Wii, these HD ports are a great way to relieve these original games with some slight updates. Gone are the Duracell batteries and other branded content, which makes sense in some ways that it would have been gone just because the undertaking of getting the rights to every single item again would sound like a tedious nightmare. Graphically, these games are presented at 1080p dock at 30 frames a second. You wish they were 60, but the games still play fine considering you have a hundred Pikmin plus your main character and enemies on screen. With the core premise being gather as many Pikmin as you can to survive 30 days, rebuild your ship, and get off the planet, 
the games are still great to play despite a 30 FPS frame limit. Both games offer similar control schemes to their GameCube and Wii releases. While personally the motion control style like the Wii was my preferred way to play, the updated Pro Controller and Joy-Cons were great as well. While Pikmin 3 and 4 are great to play, it's great knowing I can play all four games on the same console today. Metroid Prime Remastered is a game I've been wanting to see since the Wii U era. While the Metroid Prime Trilogy was great, the remaster does so much more than just add a shiny coat of paint. There's new textures bringing this game into true HD and it is gorgeous. If you missed out on the GameCube original or the Wii release, no worries here. This is the definitive version. Controls have been greatly updated which going back and playing the game in the original GameCube control screen with a GameCube controller, definitely not ideal. Honestly, there's so much I could gush over when talking about this game. Not just the graphics, but how smooth the gameplay is, going to a morph ball, how fun it is to take out enemies and the strategy involved. Look, ultimately, if you have not had a chance to play this, you no longer have an excuse to miss out on this classic game. Especially considering a physical copy is $40 compared to $60 new releases, and it's worth every single penny because you will get multiple playthroughs out of this. Something worth mentioning though is that some of the original GameCube content was cut and it's just additional content like being able to hook up Metroid Prime Fusion and getting the Fusion suit or being able to play the original Metroid on the GameCube. If you want to play the original Metroid, you have the Nintendo Switch Online service. And while we do miss the fusion suit, it's not an ultimate loss considering that this game is absolutely fun to play. And honestly, you won't see the fusion suit outside of saving. If you missed out on the original release of Star Ocean Second Story or the PSP release, now's the time to get into this absolutely classic game. The game features two stories that are both gripping at your heartstrings. The game also has that beautiful HD 2D overhaul, which is a feast for your eyes. Combat is a absolute blast in this game. As an action RPG, you don't just hack and slash your enemies. There are numerous strategies involved, such as changing how your party members behave, assist actions, and battles are so satisfying to play through. Something you definitely need in an action RPG. Also, this game has multiple recruitable characters, which means multiple endings, and you have so many hours of fantastic gameplay to look forward to. This is more than just a port. There are so many quality of life improvements that have been added, making this not only the best Star Ocean game in the series, but easily a game of the year contender. If you haven't played it, this is one of our top games of the year. I don't know if we can stress how much this game is absolutely amazing and definitely, definitely worth you picking up. If not now, maybe on Black Friday. Yes, Super Mario Remake technically hasn't been released at the time of this recording. And yes, it's our true number one, or tied for number one. It's honestly our most anticipated game of this year. Our adoration of this game's been shared over and over. But so far, what we've seen is absolutely promising. New chain attacks had the opportunity to have a chance to unleash a powerful trio attack, and successful time hits now add additional damage to the enemy party. Also, we can finally see more details in this characters. Did you know that the curl on Gino wasn't his nose, it was his hair? Environments have been upgraded to beautiful gorgeous HD graphics, and we have modern camera angles of classic game scenes. So no other major changes have been announced, but so far the Nintendo polish is shining, and the original story is now available for a new generation to enjoy. What we're excited about seeing is great moments from a new perspective, and we welcome these changes. While watching the previews of this game, I'm personally hyped. The classic music returns, as well as classic controls and difficult. The world map's been updated, what many and ourselves will agree is for the better. You can also see stat differences for new equipment and shops as well as few other quality light differences. Ultimately, this is modern meets retro in the best way possible. What remasters are you excited to see this year? Did we miss any? Let us know in the comments, and if you made it this far, we would love it if you subscribed as well. We're on the road to a thousand subscribers and every click of that button helps. Thank you so much for watching. Life is out of control enough. Don't let your gaming be.